Hey, what's this? Looks like a well. But why covered? But why two wells? A second one so close? For water, perhaps. What are you looking at? What are these wells for? To throw the waste. Waste? But there is no waste here. And no stench either. These tanks take in 5,000 kilos of waste daily. How? By magic? <laughs> no, 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 no. Based on scientific principles. What's scientific about digging a well? How do they dispose the waste? Would you like to see it? Let's go. Here we segregate waste into dry and wet sections. Wet waste is added to this mixer to be crushed. But why crush it? Segregate? But it's the municipal corporation's job. Why should we do it? Oh, come on. The process needs our organic waste to be crushed in this mixer. Organic means? Organic means that can be decomposed. To start with, the process needs wet or organic waste to be crushed in this mixer and then put it in the tank. This is just like our kitchen mixer with sharper blades that makes all waste into a fine slurry. We also add some water to it. How much water? You need water in the same proportion as waste. So, for 100 kilos of waste, 100 liters of water is used. 100 liters of water? We add hot water from the solar heater. Why use hot water? The microbes in the primary digester tank work efficiently only in hot water. They also need fresh air. There are microbes in this tank? This digester contains cow dung in which microbes are grown and then we add waste. What do microbes do? They decompose waste. Addition of hot water helps to get weed-free manure. The homogeneous slurry is sent to a gas storage tank called the secondary digester. This tank has a different set of microbes that don't need any fresh air or even sunlight. So the tank is completely sealed. The microbes in this digester now work on the waste slurry and produce methane gas or biogas. How is the waste or the waste slurry transferred from one digester to the other? Simple, with the law of gravity. Gravity? These tanks have been built on different levels with a slope, so it travels because of gravity. It's that easy. Once biogas has been produced, what happens with the remaining slurry? Sent to a sewage, is it? Not at all. Nothing is wasted in this project. This waste slurry is very good for the soil. So, we send it to a sand pit where the water floats above and the manure settles down. Wow! This waste slurry produces manure? Yes! The water is sent back to the tank and remaining slurry is dried as manure. You mean even water is reused? Wow! This is great! Do tell us, where can this biogas be used? Since we crush the waste very finely and add hot water and air to it, the microorganisms are able to work efficiently to produce 85% pure, high-quality biogas. That is why the gas produced through this project doesn't need further purification. The blue flame, call it nature's flame if you like, is proof of purity. This gas can be used for cooking, in boilers, in hotels, and for electricity. Experiments are now being conducted to make this gas for vehicles as well. What if the place where this gas is needed is far from the project site? By using a blower, it can be sent as far as one kilometer. Oh, biogas is multifaceted. Not just biogas, the manure too. Yes, this organic manure is a boon for the soil. Not only is it weed free, but also rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and iron. This manure helps to retain water in the soil and also helps produce good quality fruits, flowers and good grains using less water. When all this waste is collected and brought here, does it smell a lot and attract flies too? Well, 
If the waste comes segregated into dry and wet waste, we can inspect it and put it in the mixer quickly, not keeping it in the open for more than 30 minutes. But yes, it has to be segregated. Segregated? By whom? By whom? By all of us. Those who generate the waste. As your income increases, your waste increases. People who buy more goods generate more waste. The responsibility of separating the waste lies in the hands of those who create it. Communities look dirtier because they don't have adequate facilities. On the other hand, those who create more waste despise the waste. Hmm. Out of sight, out of mind. If one can't separate even a kilo of waste at home, how can the municipal corporation deal with 10,000 tons of waste? Fine. Then what role the municipality will play? The municipal corporation's job is to collect waste and keep all areas clean. If the waste is separated at source, it becomes easier for municipality to treat the waste in their respective areas. Who has the time to segregate waste here? You don't need to separate waste. Just use separate dustbins for wet and dry waste. Dry waste goes to waste pickers who don't have to work in unhygienic conditions. Why should anyone dirty their hands in your waste? I agree with you. This helps preserve our environment and creates employment opportunities for many. After segregation, if the clean waste goes for recycling, it will generate employment in recycling plants. This recycling will reduce the extraction of natural resources from Earth. If we keep extracting from nature, one day we will run out of resources. Hang on! Why not just incinerate the waste? I hear one can generate electricity from it. Isn't that much simpler? No need to segregate and you get electricity too. Then why all this trouble? Hmm, burning waste releases toxins like dioxins, which are lethal to both human beings and nature. The process doesn't leave you with precious byproducts like manure. It also destroys calcium, magnesium and other important minerals. You also kill the possibility of recycling the dry waste. Hmm, this project is also important for climate change. Climate change? Yes, if waste is not treated, it decomposes and produces methane gas which goes into the atmosphere and is 20 times more harmful than carbon dioxide. Therefore, producing methane through a Nisargaroon plant and using it judiciously is the best thing to do. What is this Nisargaroon? Nisargaroon means nature's door. Does nature bill us for the air, water and sunlight we use? Nature is a bank. Nature? A bank you say? Yes, we borrow whatever we need from this bank and use it. Nature gives us water, trees, flowers, fruits, fishes and food grains. But after using it all, we discard waste irresponsibly. Humans tend to only make withdrawals from nature's account without replenishing it. One way to give back is in the form of good manure, clean energy and water. Biogas helps us to save fuel and it reduces the pollution level also. Absolutely. But will the municipality do this? Why only municipality? Those who create substantial waste should do this in their own premises too. It is our duty and responsibility to save Earth through a Nisargaroon plant.